ho ho ho, hoka rink on after 100 miles. So like a crazed seasonal Santa Claus, riding in his sleigh across the snow-covered land, his reindeer chums pulling the way towards Christmas Day, spreading goodwill to all, and running shoes, hopefully. I've reached 100 miles in the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, and here is my 100 mile review. So overall, a really great shoe, a great value shoe, though I've had to make some customizations to this one to make it work for me, and there are a couple of slight issues that we do need to address. So this is a shoe you viewers requested for me to review, and I duly obliged. I've worn the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon here on runs between three miles and 11 miles. Paces have varied between about six minutes 50 per mile to about eight minutes 20 per mile. Don't worry, hopefully I remembered the conversions there for you. So how is this lightweight trainer holding up after 100 big ones? So the upper first, as you can see, there's some significant discoloration around here. The weather's obviously changed. We've moved from kind of a more autumnal feel to the cold icy bite of winter. That toe box has taken the majority of the pounding there and certainly the shoes looking pretty discolored. It was a very bright, vibrant red when I first got it out of the box and after 100 miles it's certainly taken its toll on it. That side, the tongue and the laces really, around this tight kind of top part of the shoe, they seem to be completely unaffected. I found the toe box depth and the overall feel really of the upper fantastic. I think the fit is actually one of the best things about this shoe. You can vary the lockdown quite considerably by adjusting the tightness of the laces around the toe box area and then up closer towards the sort of midfoot ankle area. I really do think that that could benefit those with a wider foot. I've got relatively narrow feet but I like a little more room in the toe box. It's got quite large toes I think. I don't know. I've never really considered how large my toes are to the average man or woman for that matter. I think one area that could be a bit of a problem uh, with the upper though is where the eyelets are. They've got this kind of reinforced plasticky addition to the mesh there and I have started to notice it is starting to degrade a little bit there and um, where the laces have been pulled through. Just something to keep an eye on. Did you get it? I think the mesh is breathable enough. There have been some quite cold uh, conditions on some of my runs in the Rincon but hasn't really been a major issue. If you are running in very wet conditions that mesh does tend to allow moisture to escape reasonably well. It's certainly not as breathable a shoe as something like the Pegasus 35 or the 36. Um, if you wander around in some quite chilly or windy conditions in that shoe you know about it. Feet have felt nice and comfy and cozy inside the Rincon. So in terms of underfoot feel with the Hokoroni Oni Rincon, I really did not like the supplied insoles whatsoever. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen. They're basically sort of almost like a papery sort of feel. I don't know if you know those uh, kids' magazines that you can get, and they always give like the kids free stuff. It's kind of, it says it's free, but it's not really. They charge you, you know, four or five pounds for these magazines, and they've got these sort of felt toys inside. It kind of feels a little bit like that. Absolutely useless. I replaced those insoles with some of those out of my Pegasus 35 turbos. The ye olde 35 turbos. I mean, they're so old. I mean, those had had about 190 miles in them. There was still a bit more cushioning underfoot um, with the Rincons once I'd inserted those insoles. There's just so little point to those things being in there in the first place. They just do nothing, really. So I managed to achieve a slightly more cushion dried that was more to my tastes. Much more enjoyable over distance and far less fatiguing. So there's some slight creasing going on in the midsole, kind of around the heel area, towards the forefoot here, around the midfoot, certainly. But I feel that there's relatively little change in underfoot responsiveness after 100 miles. In fact, I'd even suggest that the shoe's responsiveness improves after 20 miles and onwards. So I've predominantly been using this shoe for endurance and tempo paced efforts. I totaled up all the runs, um, you know, because I'm a extremely sad, nerdy man. An average pace came to about seven minutes, 45 per mile. I midfoot strike most of the time, regardless of perhaps what other people might say, but that's what I do. I'm, what reason would I have to, to make it up? None. Ah, beast. Ah, a faithful friend. You right, the beast. Looking at the outsole, the majority of the wear is around that midfoot area. 
some of the rubber pieces there are actually pretty worn already at this point. Very little wear to the rubber down at the heel area. So this shoe has an absolute mass of midsole material that forms up quite a lot of the outsole also. Seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment. I was chatting with some of the club runners the other day that I bumped into on Thursday evening and they commented that it just looked absolutely huge, the midsole on this shoe. It does have to be noted that the midsole kind of dries up in terms of the base inside the shoe. I would suggest, oh, there's a fair few centimeters there. It kind of cups around your foot. So your foot isn't resting on all of this midsole. On the outsole, that midsole foam showed quite considerable degradation, even after 50, 60 miles or so. But it does have to be noted that it doesn't seem to have got any worse after that point. So 30 miles on, no additional degradation to that midsole. So my most recent effort in the Rincon was an 11 mile one to get it up to that 100 mile figure. And I flew in at seven minutes 47 per mile pace. Did you get it? Though I have to state that's probably about as far as I'd really want to run in this shoe. For a longer, lower paced effort, I think I'd probably want something with a little more support. And it did feel to me that the midsole certainly around this midfoot area, did begin to feel like it was bottoming out around that point. It could just be that it was me, actually. <laughs> didn't want to run any further, but it did start to feel not uncomfortable, but it felt like the midsole had probably had its day at that point and needed a rest. I wouldn't say that the shoe in any way has been uncomfortable on any of the runs I've taken it out in. Certainly one of the most comfortable, welcoming shoes that I've had of recent time. You can imagine the tired, hungry traveller reaching the warm, inviting in. I haven't experienced any soreness, blistering, rubbing, heel slippage, any of that with this shoe. So I did mention earlier, just spending a little bit of time getting the lacing right with the Rincon does make a big, big difference. I can see the very quick um, apparent aesthetic wear on the outsole, perhaps putting off potential buyers from this shoe. That side, I do feel that you could get up towards perhaps 250, 300 miles in the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon before responsiveness and cushioning and perhaps the wear on the outsole do start to become a major issue. I think you could draw a bit of a comparison between the Rincons and the New Balance Beacon here. Certainly in terms of midsole feel, quite similar. Underfoot feel too is very similar. Uh, between these two shoes. This is the V1 Beacon. I believe that people are actually really, really enjoying this one still over the version two. I think it's something to do with the heel sort of area. Um, I've enjoyed this one. I've only taken it out about probably 40 miles or so, but Christmas is coming up and this looks like a Christmas shoe. Go well with a Santa hat. You've got to weigh up though at 105 pounds. This shoe does present excellent value. It's light, responsive, versatile and breathable. It certainly does look the part. How are you doing? And I think that it can find a way into almost any runner's shoe rotation. I went true to size in this one, and I think you should too. So if you've used the Rincons, if you've got on well with them, if it was love at first sight, or things turned sour and you just couldn't make it work, please comment below and let myself and the rest of the running community know about it. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.